Okay, so this is the next video on the in the additional math series, and we're looking at, as you can see on the screen, um, permutations and combinations. So this is a separate special topic. It's not connected to to any other topic, <coughs> and you may have studied it in IGCSE, uh, or maybe not. I forget now if that's in the syllabus or not. Uh, but anyway. Um, it's based around two different definitions which I've written straight away uh, here. So the one on the left, NPR, refers to the number of ways of arranging, so a keyword arranging, uh, R objects from N. And that's called a permutation. It's a slightly old-fashioned word which means the same thing as arrangement. So in an arrangement, the order matters. So if we look at this uh, set of five uh, colored circles, or let's say balls, uh, black ball, blue ball, purple ball, red ball, green ball, um, we have five balls, they're different colors. If I now uh, redraw, and I draw something like this, uh, here's the green ball, and then the, the blue ball, and then the purple ball, the black ball and the red ball. So the same five balls but they're in a different order so this would be uh, a different um, permutation. But on the other hand it would be the same combination. So combination so same combination uh, it's the same, so these two um, groups or lists are the, the same combination because they're the same set of objects. Think of a combination like a set. The order doesn't matter with a set, but they're a different list. Yeah. So a permutation is a list where order matters. A combination is a set where order does not matter. So combination can also be called choice or also a keyword selection. Look out for the word selection in exam questions as meaning combination. Now the, the mathematical formulas for permutations and combinations, I'm not going to give any um, explanation for these formulas. I'll only mention something you should already know, which is that n followed by an exc exclamation mark is read as n factorial and it means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 2 times 1. So that's something I think you should know. If you don't know that you must read about it. Uh, it's explained in uh, P1 maybe chapter 8 or 9 I forget. It's also explained in the additional maths textbook and uh, many other places. So if you don't know factorials, you should probably stop watching this video right now. If you've never seen NPR as shown here and NCR as, as shown here in, in our textbooks, it's often written like this, NR, uh, in a column like that. If you've never seen those, you will also need to stop this video and go back and at least make sure you understand the most basic idea of how to calculate them. Now what does the syllabus say? Let's have a quick look at the syllabus at the bottom here. Uh, the syllabus down here, so you should be able to recognize, that's actually a very key skill in these questions, recognizing and distinguishing permutations and combinations. So what they're saying in this point, very important point I think, is that the exam questions will, it will not tell you to use either of these formulas but rather they will write the question in English and they will expect you to uh, figure out which one of these two formulas is appropriate. Yeah? And in some, in some questions there may be several parts to the question, maybe the first part is, is P and the second part is C. Uh, but in any case, you must understand how to distinguish between them by reading the words and understanding the meaning. Uh, you also need to know about N factorial and the zero factorial is 1. So as I said before, this is covered in P1. You should know it. If you don't, please learn it. Um, okay. Uh, now this thing about n items taken r at a time, 
uh, we will get on to that in a minute in, in the questions. Uh, the last thing it says, answer simple problems on arrangement and selection. So I want to emphasize, arrangement is, is another word for permutation. Selection is another word for combination. And cases with repet... Now this is in brackets, look here, brackets, brackets. Cases with repetition, or with objects in a circle, or involving both permutation and combination are excluded. So for those of us who know this topic quite well, we, we would recognize that these are three things that um, are covered in S1 or Statistics 1 in AS Maths in CIE. Uh, and um, they're just like slightly more advanced cases. So let's, let's from now on in the video, I'm going to assume you know what a permutation and a combination are and you know how to com uh, calculate them using these formulas. Do we need to deal with repetitions? No. It specifically says here that repetitions is excluded. Uh, break into separate cases. This means given a slightly more difficult problem we may have to divide the problem into two or three or four uh, situations and then count. Uh, count different cases and then add, the, add all the cases together. And this last point I've written here, complement, it's a bit of a, a code word. Um, what I'm talking about here is that sometimes they may ask you how many ways uh, can X happen? And X could be defined in all kinds of ways. So X might be something like give me the number of ways in which two people can be sitting next to each other uh, if there's a line of 10 seats and there are, you know, 11, um, 9 different people. Uh, you know, these kind of questions can be quite complicated, but however the question is phrased, it will be something like, how many ways can this happen? And X, yeah. So when I say complement, I'm referring to the idea of a complement of a set, and I'm saying that sometimes we may want to use the, the opposite. Yeah? We may find it's much easier to work out how many ways can the opposite happen, not x happen. Because if we know the total uh, number of possibilities in a given situation, and we know the total number of ways within that set that the opposite of x can happen, then we can just subtract to get the number of ways x can happen. Okay, that might not be very obvious, what I mean there, but I hope it will be obvious in one of the later questions. Now I've got, I think, uh, maybe four exam questions. I'm just going to go through them one by one. The first couple are, the first one or two questions are quite easy, but just to sort of set the stage. But then there's a couple of questions that are fairly difficult and they're good examples of how students can get confused in the exam on these questions. Now of course, you know, I, I often forget to say this, but you should, um, well I guess do two things with these videos. One is you should try and read the basic facts from the textbook before you listen to the details of the video. You could do some of the um, the more the, the simpler examples uh, questions in the textbook before looking at the video. And also, more important, when I show questions, exam questions on these videos, it is a very good idea to pause the video, to stop it, try to do the question yourself, and then watch my answer and see see if you can agree with it. Of course, if you get stuck, you can just watch me do it. But uh, the best the way to get the best out of any mathematics education is to really try to do it yourself as much as possible. So let's start with the, this first question. This is quite basic. Uh, find the number of different arrangements of the letters of the word Mexico. So let me emphasize the word arrangements. What did we say? We said arrangements means permutation. Okay. Now one way to understand permutation is like this. If we want to know the total number of ways of rearranging these letters, for example, here is one way see there are uh, six letters and I have just written uh, those letters in different orders. Yeah? Obviously there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, 
uh, that the easiest way to understand how many ways to permute this is to consider six blank positions and you're going to take each one of those letters and put them into one of these positions so how many different letters if we're holding all the letters in our hand imagine them like pieces from a game we hold the six letters in our hand we put one of those six in the first space so there are six ways to do that having done that there are only five letters left so we then have five different choices for the second space we have four different choices for the next space and so on until at the end we only have one letter left so there's only one way to fill the last space now this of course fits the definition of factorial this is six factorial um, which I think is uh, 720 isn't it um, right yeah so six letters yeah so 720 because 4 factorial is 24 5 factorial is 120 and 120 times 6 is 720 so the answer to the first part is just 6 factorial notice it also fits the definition of permutation um, because the number of ways of choosing of, of arranging sorry six objects from a set of six objects is 6 factorial uh, over 6 minus 6 factorial which is 6 factorial over 0 factorial which is 6 factorial over 1 but um, <clears throat> I thought it was important to show the basic uh, kind of proof of why the permutation formula works in this case so if you've ever studied these <clears throat> problems before that was obviously far too easy for you um, but uh, anyway there it is the answer there would be 6 factorial or 720 now how, uh, let's find the number of arrangements again arrangements permutations how many begin with the letter M well if the letter M is, begi is given to be at the start of the list then we can effectively ignore it we take the remaining letters uh, EX ICO there are five remaining letters and we're going to arrange them so all we're going to do is rearrange find all possible arrangements of five letters giving us five factorial which is 120 yeah. notice that begin with M means there is a specific place for M it is not anywhere else but at the start now part three is slightly different how many arrangements have the letter X at one end and C at the other end now we've got to be a little bit careful about this it is easy but there's a little bit of a trick isn't there let's consider an example suppose I put X at one end and C at the other end what's left well I've got uh, e, a, e M I and O so I have four different um, I have uh, four letters in the middle how many ways can I arrange these letters M I E O and so on well it's just four factorial isn't it and that's 24 so is the answer 24 well no be careful the answer is not 24 because we were told X is at one end and C at the other end it doesn't tell us if C is at the beginning or if C is at the end so C and X can be swapped so for every case in this list we get two possibilities C and then X or X and then C so we simply have to multiply it, the number of ways of rearranging four objects by two to give the answer 48 so that's quite uh, straightforward let's look at the second case this is actually the same question again pause the video if necessary it's actually the second part of the same question uh, now we're going to consider what happens if four of the letters of the word Mexico are selected at random find the number of combinations so here they use the word combination sometimes they use the word selection either way it means we're talking about this also written as this also written with a formula like this okay <coughs> we're going to select four letters from the six letters of the word Mexico so that's a direct example of the definition of combinations uh, I should go back and uh, remind anyone who doesn't remember 
if we took these five balls here, remember they're different coloured balls, um, if, we, if we wanted to know how many ways we could choose three from this five, we would be saying, well let's take uh, five choose three, and we would put n equals five and r equals three. So r of course is always less than n, n is the total number of objects, and r is the um, the number we're choosing. So here we're choosing 4 from 6. Obviously you can use a calculator but it's very um, easy if you remember the pattern that 6 choose 4 is the same as 6 choose 2 which is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over uh, 2 factorial, 2 times 1 times 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So this section always cancels and we always get a division where there are um, uh, r, uh, r items in the numerator and r items in the denominator where r is this number here and of course we can use the fact that uh, n choose r is always equal to n choose n minus r if you examine the the definition. So I'm rushing through that a bit and actually you don't need to know it, you can just put this on the calculator. But I find it's useful to know how to, to calculate these things quickly without a calculator. Here I get uh, 15. So it's basically f choose four items from six. Now suppose the letter M must be selected. Now again, selection is combination. So we're not worried about where is M its position doesn't matter. It's just a matter of choice. So M has been selected, so forget M. We have EXICO. We're going to have to choose 3, not 4, because we already have 1. 3 from this 5. So 5 choose 3. Well, that's just 5 times 4 over, three, uh, over 2 times 1, which is 10. OK. So I hope that's fairly clear. Those are very, very basic questions. The next ones get a bit more difficult. Let's look at this one. Uh, I've drawn a diagram already here to help. So if you want to, you can pause the video and try and do it on your own. Okay, so you've got to read this question carefully because it, it, it is a little confusing in, in its description. Notice the ten different varieties. So you can imagine it means like excuse me, uh, different plants. A rose is a type of flower, a type of, of, of plant, so ten different varieties of rose bush means ten different objects, they all happen to be rose bushes. Yeah? Now the important point is that the gardener will buy six, but they must all be different varieties. So what it means, if, if I can again use colours to illustrate uh, well, actually, no, I won't use colours here. Let me just answer the first part. Calculate the number of ways she can make her selection. So she's going to choose six items, and there are ten different items. Now, should we use permutation or combination here? Well, you should see that the key word um, is selection in the question. So they, 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 they're using this, this word as a kind of a, a code for you to say to you, look, this is what we mean. If you go to a shop and you buy six items, you don't really care what order they're in, do you? You, know, you just put them in the bag and you take them away. You don't care what order. You're, the point is that you're making a selection. So because you're making a selection, you're doing a combination. So the, the answer here is, is that we're choosing six items from a set of ten. Now that's the same as choosing four items from a selection of ten. So I need four items in the numerator, four numbers in the numerator, four in the denominator. Yes, you can use a calculator here. Now of course eight cancels with four and two, three cancels with nine. That gives me 210 possible ways of choosing six varieties of rosebush from a total of um, ten. OK, that was the easy bit, but the second bit's a lot harder. Um, of the ten, three are pink, five are red, and two are yellow. So I illustrated this with, the, with a diagram at the bottom here. Let's put it here, maybe, or here. 
Okay, so oops, that was <laughs> that was unfortunate. Uh, let's try that again. Um, okay. So three pink, five red, two two yellow. I've actually drawn green because you can't see yellow on this um, on this screen. Now we're going to find out the number of ways in which the selection again notice the word selection means combinations of six rose bushes can contain no pink rose bush so this is only one mark by the way so it's going to be pretty easy if he doesn't select any pink rose bush that means these three are are removed from the possibilities that leaves only one two three four five and then six seven different varieties so if that's the only restriction then she's allowed to choose from seven but she's got to make six from that seven so that's seven choose six which is the same as seven choose one which is just seven over one which is seven so there's only seven ways she can pick seven uh, different selections she can make if there's no pink because there's only seven different um, non-pink varieties available so she's just going to not choose one of those seven when there's seven ways of doing that but here's the tricky bit and it's four marks <coughs> in how many different ways can she choose one rose bush of each color now let, let me first show you a way that you might try and do this and and let me show you that it's wrong you might say okay she's going to get one rose bush of each color let's go through them one at a time how many different pinks can she select three which by the way is three choose one so she you, she could do it like this like choose one from these three then choose one from the five reds and then choose one from the two yellows now you'd multiply those together because each of those choices is independent and then because you, you've only got three from this you need to choose three more from the remaining seven so you could do seven choose three right now this would give you a certain number um, 30 times 7 times 6 times 5 over 6 that cancels 30 times 35 oh dear what's that that's 900 plus 530 that's 1050 now that answer is wrong and in fact it's much too big uh, sometimes the fact that the answer is too big gives you a clue so what does it mean the answer is too big why is this wrong can you see so this is wrong because it's it's what you might call double counting why is it double counting I'll, I'll try my best to explain it it's a bit confusing so double counting means I'm counting the same case more than once uh, let's try and make an example uh, now, now don't forget in all this let, sorry let me just move this out of the way so it doesn't distract us um, don't forget in all this that the three pink let's say these three pink rose bushes are, uh, varieties are not all the same they're all pink but they're different varieties that's what makes it confusing I think so let's suppose for example that she chose uh, the first pink and then she chose maybe the third red uh, three and then she chose the second yellow which I'm, I'm drawing as green just to make it uh, visible so in other words let me just show with arrows this this choice three choose one is occurring here this choice five choose one is occurring here and this choice two choose one is occurring here and then she's got to choose three from the remaining seven so she might choose for example um, well she already chose the first pink so we could sort of uh, put crosses she, she, she's already chosen that one she's already chosen uh, that one and she's already chosen that one so we're saying well she needs six in total she's going to going to need three more so let's say for argument's sake she then chose pink two pink three and red um, red one so here we have six choices there's at least one of each color so this is included in the set but unfortunately notice I could get the same set in a different way because all I would have to do is in this first choice of one pink I might instead of choosing one I might choose two 
and then everything else uh, well not everything else uh, this could be as before as before I could choose the third red as before I could choose the second yellow and then in my in my last phase here choosing three from seven remember it has to be three from the remaining seven I could decide to choose uh, the first and the third pink first and the third pink uh, where am I going yeah and then I could decide to choose the first red just as before so notice these two choices these two selections are the same selection but they are counted as different in this counting process so what's the problem here why 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 is this process of multiplying the different steps of choice not working the answer is the only way that this will work is as if these choices are independent but they're not independent because this last phase of choice 7 choose 3 involves choosing again from the same sets that we chose from in these first three set stages Okay, I'm going to stop trying to explain that now because I appreciate that some people will find this significantly confusing. You do need to spend time on this kind of problem. Even if you've already learned permutations and combinations, perhaps at a lower level, you need to um, go through examples like this. So please, if necessary, go you know listen to that again. Now let me show you the correct way of doing the problem and I hope you'll understand better why this is the correct way of doing it. So the correct way of doing it is to um, is to um, oh sorry I'm just going to delete this is to consider the the opposite case and actually what we need to do is is treat the first part of the question as a kind of a clue so this 7 that we calculated, how did we calculate? We said, well, um, there's exactly 7 ways of choosing no pink rose bushes. So we're going to use the idea of complement that I said at the beginning. Oh, sorry, that's bad English. Um, how many choices in total? I'll write this in English and then, then we'll see the maths. Uh, in total so in other words all possibilities let's let's say it like that all possibilities minus no r uh, what am I saying not r uh, no red minus no pink minus no yellow think about it this way here we worked out how many ways 210 ways in total to choose six uh, varieties from ten. Now we're going to subtract the number of ways of choosing six varieties from ten but with no red and subtract the number of ways of choosing six varieties of, from ten but with no pink and subtract the way of choosing the, the number of ways of choosing six varieties of ten with no yellow. So this is what I meant by complement in other words, find the total and subtract the opposite of what you want. So for the first one is easy to deal with. There's the, how many ways can we can we choose six from ten but have no red? Well, looking at this list of ten here, we see that there's only one, two, three, four, five varieties which are not red. So there are no ways. It's impossible to have choose six and have no red. How many ways can we choose six and have no pink? Well, if there's no pink, there's only these seven, so we're going to get seven choose six, which is actually exactly what we calculated here, seven. Now, how many ways can we have no yellow? Well, yellow is these green ones here. Again, sorry, yellow is green. Uh, so if we get rid of those, we've got a total of eight. Well, that's eight choose six, giving me eight choose two, which is eight times seven over two, which is 28. So now we see that the therefore the um, number of ways with at least one of each is actually the total two hundred and ten minus zero minus seven minus twenty eight giving one hundred and seventy five the answer one hundred and seventy five 
So I think that example, maybe more than any other, is important because it shows you that sometimes you have to count separate cases. There, there really isn't a, a way to get the answer in one step. And also sometimes you have to use the complement. If it's not, if it's not obvious how to get the um, the uh, the number you want directly, consider the opposite case. Okay, I hope that was useful. Let's look at the next example. So there it is. So have a look at it if you want to try and pause the video and do it on your own. That's fine. So here we go. So an exam paper contains 12 different questions, 3 on trigonometry, 4 on algebra, and 5 calculus. Candidates are asked to answer 8 questions. Calculate the number of different ways in which a candidate can select emphasis, select 8 questions, if there is no restriction. Now I think in this in this question more than any other it's critical that you see this keyword select because suppose I had an exam paper with these questions 1 2 3 dot 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 and then 12 there were 12 questions and on the exam you're asked to do 8 of them so you could do it like this question 2 question 4 question 7 question 1 question 12 question uh, you know 3 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, question 6, question 5. See, I might choose, so this is my exam paper here, yeah? I might choose to do all the questions in this order, yeah? And you might get confused thinking, well, is this an order? Is this an arrangement? Or is this a selection? It isn't completely obvious on, it, on its own. You have to actually look for the keyword. So the keywords are selection or combination or arrangement or permutation that we discussed at the beginning. So because we see the word selection it means we're going to do combinations. Okay. So having figured that out, it's this first part is, is easy. Uh, how many different ways can I select eight questions? Now it says if there is no restriction. What does it mean by no restriction? It means it doesn't care about these different types four, sorry, three trig, four algebra, five calculus. So it's very easy, you just do 12, from 12 items, choose eight items, well that's 12, choose four, which if I remember correctly, let me just double check, um, over four times, three times, two times, one, so I've got, uh, what am I doing, 12, choose four, okay, 12's go away, oh that's right, so I get four, um, uh, yeah, 495 different, <coughs> excuse me, different um, ways of selecting 8 from 12. Okay, part 2 says, what is the number of these selections which contain questions on only two of the three topics, trig, algebra and calculus? So again, we have a similar problem to before, in which there are th here there's three different types. So it's, let's say, trig, trig, uh, trigonometry, that's the blue. And then maybe uh, algebra, there's one, two, three, four, algebra. And then there's five on calculus. Where's, where's that gone? Uh, maybe green. So five on calculus. And we're being asked to find the number of ways we can make choices from this list of 12, uh, 8 from this list of 12, so that only 2 of the 3 appear in the list. Mm. So we have to think carefully about this. Is the complement helpful? Is breaking it into cases helpful? Well, the complement is not really useful here because the opposite would be uh, uh, be how many ways can we uh, go, can we uh, have questions on all three of the topics, which is similar to saying how many ways can we have at least one of the, each of the three topics. And yeah, we could do the question like that, but that's a bit confusing. Um, it's probably much easier to just break into three cases. I hope you can see what I mean by that. So in three cases, uh, if these are, I've forgotten now, what, what did I say? Uh, these are trigonometry, these are algebra, and these are calculus. We could have just trig and algebra, 
or we could have dr just trig and calculus, or we could have just algebra and calculus. Remember, the order doesn't matter. So there's only three ways we can have uh, exactly two... Um, sorry, let me just move this one out of the way. There's only three ways we can have exactly two kinds of, of, of question on, on the list of eight. So let's consider one by one. If we take trig and algebra, the total number of questions available is, um, is 3 plus 4 is 7, so that's impossible. Remember, we need eight questions in total. So that's impossible. Now, trig and calculus, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in total. Eight questions. So there's obviously only one way to, to select eight items from eight items. If we take algebra and calculus, you see we have nine different questions. So how many ways can we choose eight from that set of nine? Well, it's nine choose eight, which is nine choose one, which is the same as nine. So the total is found by adding the three cases, zero plus one plus nine, giving us a total of ten. So you see, it's a little bit ugly, obviously, to use this breaking into cases. But <clears throat> the questions you will get will have two, three, or four cases. And so it really won't take long. It's just a case of uh, what's necessary is to look at the question and to think about these two or three or four different ways of doing them and decide which one will be easiest. Now, if you have extra time at the end of an exam, you can check your answer. You know, you can look for different ways of doing it, getting the same answer, and seeing if your answer is reasonable. But um, but I would repeat what I said at the beginning, that what you really want to look at is either break the problem into a few distinct cases or to use the complement. In other words, instead of how many ways can X happen, how many ways can X not happen, and then subtract it from the total. All right, nearly finished. Let's look at, uh, I think this is the last one, isn't it? Yeah, this is the last one. This is actually the second part of the previous question. Um, so have a look at it. So now I'm going to do it. So here we have a fashion magazine runs a competition, eight photographs of dresses lettered, excuse me, uh, lettered A to H. Even before you read the rest of the question, as soon as you see that, you should be thinking permutations. Because if they're lettered, it means they have a unique identity. Okay, I, that's not exactly true, sorry, what I just said. Um, but lettered ABCD means that each one of the dresses is a unique, distinct item. Competitors are asked to submit an arrangement. There we go, that's the key word. Arrangement means permutation. Yeah? Arrangement of five letters showing their choice in descending order of merit. So they've given you even extra clue here with the word order. So order does matter. <coughs> the winner is picked at random from these competitors who, um, whose arrangement agrees with that chosen by a panel of experts. Calculate the number of possible arrangements of five letters chosen from eight. So this is very simple. This is just eight times 7, times 6, times 5, times 4, or 8 choose 5, uh, uh, sorry, 8 uh, permutations of 8, 5 from 8. Uh, so, or, or you could write it as 8 factorial over 3 factorial. Okay, this is a big number, but it's not too difficult to work out. 20 times 42 um, gives you 840, 840 times 8 gives you 6,400 plus, 3, plus 320, so 6,720. Of course, you can use a calculator to do that, and um, but that's, that should be easy for you. Now, in how many of these arrangements is A placed first? Okay, so we're looking at arrangements that are like this, A, and then, remember, there are going to be five letters, so it could be, for example, D, B, F, G. So A is placed first, so that's taken out of the, the choosing process, and then we have four items placed in, a, in an ordered sequence, 
and they're chosen not from 8 but from 7. So we're, we're looking at permutations of four objects from a set of seven. So it should be obvious that that's seven uh, times six times five times four, which is um, whatever that is, uh, forgotten, 20 times 120, Uh, sorry, what's what's that? Uh, Forty-two times eight hundred and forty, isn't it? Yeah, eight hundred and forty. Okay. Now, in how many of the arrangements contain a? So here we, as as is often the case, the last part of the question is the most difficult, and we have to think. Okay, I need a strategy. I need an approach. How many of the possible arrangements of five letters from eight contain a? Let's look at uh, some examples, like we have B, D, E, F, G. See, five letters from the eight. This one does not contain A. D, A, F, E, C. This one does contain A. Now, there's more than one way to do it, but I would suggest that the easiest way is to consider the complement. What do I mean by the complement here? how many selections do not contain A? That's, that's going to be easy to work out, isn't it? The reason it's going to be easy to work out is because I'm taking away one choice, but I'm sti I still need five. So I, um, the, the number of uh, permutations uh, which does not contain A is uh, seven times six times five times... Sorry, hold on a minute. What am I, what am I thinking about here? Um, Sorry. Yes, of course. So, I'm, what I'm what I'm trying to do is to calculate the number of what a uh, number of arrangements not containing a. Let me write it down so it's clear. Not containing a. So I've got seven items, and I need f to make five choices. So I've got that seven factorial over seven minus five factorial using the formula. 7 factorial over 2 factorial, which is that number. So using the idea of the complement, uh, number of arrangements containing A oops, containing A equals the total number of arrangements, which we already worked out, 8 factorial over 3 factorial, which is 6720, minus the number of arrangements not containing A, which is 7 factorial over 2 factorial. So you can see with a little bit of factorization, this is something like 8 minus 3 times, um, times that number 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Yeah, that's right. So that's uh, 5 times five, so it's 25 times 24 times 7, which gives me 625 minus 20, 600 times 7, which is 4,200. So of the 6,720 possible arrangements of five letters chosen from 8, 4,200 contain, <coughs> contain the letter A. OK. So um, that's the end of, uh, of this section. Of, uh, basically, you can see that the, the, the actual skills, or let's say the knowledge you need, is very specific. It's what this means here and what this means here. And the style of the questions is that uh, there's a lot of very simple applications of those formulas. And then there's a few cases where they ask you to do some quite tricky reasoning where the idea of breaking into cases or um, breaking into separate cases or using the complementary set can be very useful. Okay, so I hope you found that uh, helpful and I'll, I'll stop there. So goodbye.